we have a well insulated two stage steam turbine. Now here's the illustration for it. There's the first stage or the first part of the turbine or I'll just call it turbine one and then turbine two. You, you can have the steam come out in between and then go back in. Maybe they're connected to a common shaft and the shaft then has some contribution to the power from the first turbine stage and added contribution to the shaft uh, from the second turbine stage and they sum up to what would then maybe be provided to an electric generator and you generate electricity and sell it. Okay, But you have two stages on the steam turbine. It's operating at steady state. There's uh, no information about kinetic energy or potential energy that keep the problem statement short, you, you assume it's negligible. And they ask you to determine the power developed by each turbine stage. All right. This is a little awkward on the wording, but if you look at this, you would say, hmm, I need the power developed. There's a W dot. Typical units for W dot are kilowatts, right? W dot, first turbine stage, units of kilowatts. But uh, your experience in solving these problems would say, you know, I'm going to need to know the mass flow rate of the steam going through that turbine. True? You have enough experience knowing that? You have to know that. And if I look at this problem and reread this problem and read it 20 times, and it's not embarrassing, you have to reread problems the first time you solve a new problem like this and struggle with it, is there any M dot given? So then we go to the next best thing for the interpretation of what I need to solve for, for part A. Instead of W dot, what should I, and notice they didn't give me any units. So it's just, it says the power developed by each turbine stage. So what do you think I need to, what's the next best thing? Per kilogram. Per kilogram. And so that wouldn't be, it would be W dot over M dot, because we didn't know M dot. So why not put it per kilogram? So we're going to be asked to solve for, a lot of times we'll put lowercase w t1, lowercase w t2. That's the specific power or the power per unit mass flow rate or the specific energy developed by that turbine per kilogram of turbine going through. Notice again, you have kilojoules per second as a power divided by kilograms per second. That's a mass flow rate or you have kilojoules per kilogram. It's the same, right? So power over mass flow rate or energy per unit mass that flows through the device. All right, I believe, don't you have to struggle with this? What, where, what am, exactly am I asked to solve for? That's not trivial, trivial. Often you really have to think about it and work with it. So now that we know what we have to solve for and the anticipated units for my answer, we approach it using mass balance, energy balance, entropy balance, exergy balance, a lot of tools that you have. Here we would just do a control volume around that first turbine and we do an energy balance and when you came out with the energy balance the specific work or power developed by that first turbine would be H1 minus H2. There's a few steps that you would need to do to solve that. Notice that they gave us a table down here of properties. So at state one, they said the pressure is 9,800 kilopascal. That agrees with this number, true or false? True. They say the temperature is 610 degrees C. Does that agree with the illustration? Looks like pressure and temperature were used to get the enthalpy and to evaluate the entropy. The same thing for the dead state state not, so we could get the flow exergy at state one coming in. What was that equation for the flow exergy? H1 minus H naught minus T naught S1 minus S naught. And so you, you could just evaluate that flow exergy going into the turbine at state one. Notice state two, 2100, that agrees. 365, that agrees. Some evaluation of H, S, and flow exergy. And just so that you understand the table, state three down here, you have 50 kilopascal, and the quality is given 
so we know it's saturated that you could double check that looks reasonable for the saturation temperature and you could uh, trust that these values are correct you need to calculate that H as um, H is equal to H of F plus quality times H of G minus H of F likewise the equation for S and then the flow exergy you trust it's in the table that somebody calculated that correctly so we just take our two values of enthalpy given this value for H1 it's greater than H2 and we calculate the work for the first turbine stage 483 kilojoules per kilogram box it for part of part A the same thing for the second turbine stage what would that be is it H2 minus H3 and then the work of the second turbine stage would come in at uh, 739 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, how about part B? What is the exergetic efficiency of each turbine stage? So we want maybe, what symbol do we want to use for that? Maybe an epsilon, T1, maybe an epsilon, T2 exergetic efficiency for the first turbine stage and the second turbine stage so how do I calculate this you use some ratio and in the numerator it's what I'm kind of getting out what I want what's the purpose of the device and in the denominator something that has to feed it to make it work something that costs something that you provide right so what do we want out of that we want that specific work out of the turbine what it's exergetic efficiency what's it come at the expense of the exergetic change of the fluid flow through the turbine so it's the EF1 minus EF2 really is that true sure sure that would be true right and so we take this extra G it comes in at 1500 it goes out at 1091 notice what are the units on the flow extra G and what are the units on the enthalpy they're exactly the same it's a measure of energy I know but the particular type of energy enthalpy is your internal plus flow energy what's this flow exergy it's a measure of the ability of the energy content of that fluid to do useful work to be converted into work okay so if you calculate this uh, exergetic efficiency for the first turbine stage 97.4 percent how about uh, exergetic efficiency for the second turbine stage, EF2 minus EF3? And exergetic efficiency of the second turbine stage is 100%. Let me ask this. What can we conclude from this result? What can we conclude? That the exergetic efficiency of the second turbine stage is 100%. Any suggestions? It's completely reversible. What does that mean about the relationship between S2 and S3? It's the same. It's the same. And now let's take a look at the data. Is this S the same? So they are the same. So, okay, for the second turbine stage, it's perfect. It's perfect. The pressure dropped, the temperature changed, you have some quality on the outlet, but it's reversible. And so you get the highest. What is the overall exergetic efficiency of both of them? Let's just do exergetic efficiency overall. Can you think of a definition for that? <coughs> Yeah, so the net out divided by the overall change of the flow exergy from the inlet to the outlet. 
And when you calculate the overall exergetic efficiency, it comes in at 99.0%, uh, sorry, 99 somewhere in that vicinity. Does that problem make sense? When there's Two stage. Down here I make a table of the states that are applicable. Put in pressure in kilopascal. Temperature, enthalpy is a kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, entropy is kilojoules per kilogram. Kelvin at uh, state zero. I have 100 kilopascal, 25 degrees C, true. And the enthalpy underscore is a function of pressure and temperature, underscore H2O, the letter O, parenthesis. So there's a built-in routine that will evaluate this property, enthalpy, for steam at that pressure. That's the first thing I need to send it, as well as that temperature. And I close the parent. And there it is. There's the property evaluation. I can clean it up a little bit. And then the same thing over here, entropy underscore pressure temperature underscore H2O. And then pressure temperature closed parent, and there's your entropy. Now you say, I, how do I remember the syntax? A lot of times or the function, you can hit this function right here button. It'll bring up a, um, a little helpful reminder that P is from C4 and T is D4 and it says enthalpy in units of kilojoules per kilogram is a function of pressure in units of kilopascal and temperature in degrees C for SI units and so you get this result. All right. So you can do the same thing over here for entropy. You can see oh this is the value weight to entropy. All right so for our first state 9800 and a temperature of 610, right? One of the things in Excel is if I want to just replicate that formula, I can grab this box, drag it down, and there you go. And this enthalpy is evaluated at the temperature and pressure for that line, and this entropy is evaluated at the temperature and pressure for that line. True? Okay. Now, uh, I want to do a flow exergy column, kilojoules per kilogram. And the equation for the flow exergy is H at the state 1 minus H naught, true, minus T naught, which I'm just going to say is 298, times S minus S naught. That difference in S, both of them have to multiply the 298. Does that equation look familiar or good for? So there is the flow exergy at state one. Now I'm going to drag that formula down, and when I drag it down, I don't want anything in the fourth row to change, so I'll put a dollar sign to say fix and don't change that four, and I'll put a dollar sign right there, fix and don't change that four. All right? Okay, let's go to state two. What do we know about state two? It was 2100 kilopascal, and what was the temperature? 365. Uh, could I just grab these three cells, get the lower box right there, bring it down? Do those values look reasonable? So they're the same values. I clean this up a little bit, come up here and move that decimal over to clean it up. Likewise right there. Okay. How about for state three? State three, um, we had a pressure given of 50 kilopascal and a quality. Well, I could put the quality way over here, X as a new column. The quality is 0 0.9067, true? So now I need to say I want to enthalpy as a function of pressure and quality for steam. And then you feed it the pressure and you feed it the quality and there you go. And we'll clean that up a little bit. And same thing with entropy as a function of pressure and quality for steam. So pressure and quality. And then I'll just drag down the formula for the flow exergy. 
And did that help reproduce the table? Only thing missing is our saturation temperature. Uh, you kind of have to know the syntax, so it's the temperature sat uh, function of pressure for water. Hit the tab, click on that cell, and there you go. So it's around 81.3 degrees C for the saturation temperature. You could clean up the table a little bit. Sometimes I bold it. Sometimes I'll put a little, I don't know, formatting like that. A lot of times over here, I'll put a little column of what, how I fixed the state. What information fixed state zero? Pressure and temperature. Pressure and temperature. Pressure and temperature. Pressure and quality. So that just helps me organize the results. And now I have a table of all the properties. Maybe I could do the calculations. So what did we want to know? Work of the first turbine stage in units of kilojoules per kilogram. It was the difference between the enthalpy at state one and the enthalpy at state two. There you go. And then the work of the second turbine stage in kilojoules per kilogram the enthalpy at state two minus the enthalpy at state one. And then the exergetic efficiency of uh, the first turbine stage. What was it? The numerator divided by the difference in the flow exergy coming in versus going out of that first turbine stage. Maybe I want to express it as a percent. It's the add-in. So uh, back here, you've got to go through this to get it onto your machine. And the software was developed with funding from the National uh, Science Foundation, and it's off of another university's website, University of Alabama. Also, one other thing is if this function key, let's say I just don't remember anything. I'm in a cell, and I can come up here. First, I start a function evaluation with the equal sign and I come up to this F, okay? Now, you can use it for all kinds of things like financial, and then they show you all the financial uh, algorithms that Excel has built in. Or maybe you go and you want a statistical, average and beta, inverse distribution. But if you have, you have to grab here, unfortunately, because the list is longer than this dropdown, and scroll to the bottom, and what we added was refrigerant 407C, psychrometrics, these three refrigerants, X-Steam. Steam is the one steam, water. So if you click that X-Steam, now you see all of these functions and their description. So the enthalpy is a function of pressure and temperature for water. And then the little description. And you can just scroll, 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 pressure. There's a lot, but you have to get the right syntax. That's what you're looking for. You know what you need. You know where to go to find it, to be reminded of the syntax and the inputs. And there's a whole bunch of them. OK? Does that help? Any questions for me? Thank you very much.